Hello everyone, welcome to another final element method tutorial. My name is Li Fu Wang, and today we're going to learn how to use FEM to analyze an axiosymmetric model and how do we display the result. So here's the problem statement. Assuming that we have a thin wall pressure vessel whose radius is 0.5 meters and the thickness for the uh, for the wall is 0.05 meters. <clears throat> the thickness comparing to the radius is one or 10. So this, we can roughly use a shell element to simulate the entire geometry. The pressure we are going to apply to the model is 100 megapascal. The Pressure vessel is made of steel whose Young's modulus is 200 gigapascal and the Poisson's ratio is 0.3. And we're going to use, since the geometry and the loadings are both uh, axisymmetric, we're going to simulate this geometry using two different way. The first one is <clears throat> by simulating that using axisymmetric elements. So the axis of so the axis of symmetry is in the center and we only look at the cross section of this thin wall pressure. It will be a quarter of circle plus a straight line. We are going to apply the Y symmetry in the middle of the tank. So the length of the straight line is 0.5 meters and the radius of the circle is also 0.5 meters. In another model, we are going to use, fully simulate the shell, uh, uh, this thin wall pressure using shell element. And just to save the calculation power, we are going to apply X symmetry and Z symmetry. So we only need to model a quarter of the entire pre uh, pressure vessel. And again, we are going to apply Y symmetry at this boundary. Uh, do the abacus settings. So first things first, we are going to set the working directory to the uh, folder we want. <clears throat> and then we can create new parts. The first model we have is uh, uh, axisymmetric. So axisymmetric model, you need to choose axisymmetric and because the cross section is for the shell is just a wire. So we choose wire here. And the proximal size, uh, let's do it too. Now we need to create the important point for this geometry. This is one of the point, key points. This is another turning point. And also this point and the center of the circle. So typing the coordinate system. Notice that this Y axis is your axis of symmetry. So this is not horizontal, but vertical. So we're going to rotate this one by 90 degrees. And <clears throat> the point we're going to have is 0 0.50, 0 0.5, 0.5. Uh, and this part is the straight line. And we use this arc creator tools on the left hand side. And first select the center of the arc and then select one end of the arc and the other end of the arc. And this, this is the cross section for the shell element. Now click down and you will have the geometry. And we can create another one here, uh, <clears throat> which is the second model. It's a 3D shell element. So choose 3D, choose shell, and we're going to use revolution to create that. And the revolution method is similar to the axisymmetric. So we do apply exactly the same method
and connecting all of that, all of the points. After you finish that, you can choose the rotation. Since we're going to create only uh, a quarter of the shell, so we choose 90 degree here. This will be your shell. And now we move to the second module, which is a property, material property. We create material property, which is steel here. With a young elastic property, Young's modulus 200 E6, uh, sorry, E9, 200 gigapascal. But Sohn's ratio is 0.3. Now we create section. No matter it's axisymmetric or an actual shell element, they should all be categorized as a shell element, homogeneous shell element. Shell section. And the thickness for the shell element is 0 0.05. and leave everything default. Now we can assign the section. So select in the part, select the axisymmetric model first and then assign the section. We don't need to create sect here. And leave everything default. And then in the shell element, in the part, choose shell element and assign the section. So one thing when we are assigning sections for the shell element is we need to define the orientation when we trying to output the result. So here we assign a material orientation. And what we want is a cylindrical coordinate system instead of a rectangular coordinate system. So the default orientation already gives you cylindrical coordinate system. The normal direction is pointing outside and one direction is the transversely, uh, sorry, the uh, longitudinal direction and second uh, and the direction two is the transversely transverse direction. <clears throat> we don't need to do the same thing for our axis symmetric model because this is already con the default coordinate system for axis symmetric is already cylindrical coordinate system. So now we can move to assembly and here we create we create, we save our data. The first model, let's call it X symmetric model. And we're going to choose the X symmetric model and choose independent here. And when you see the blue one is, it means the assembly is created. Now we create a step. So, uh, pressure step. So applying pressure to the one, we leave everything default. And now we create loading. First we create the, uh, we create the inner pressure for that. And Um, and we select the wall and we're going to create inner pressure. So select the magenta one and the force for that is uh, 100 megapascal. So 100 E6. Seeing the arrow representing the pressure direction. And then we create the boundary condition for this model, we only have a Y symmetry at a point. So any boundary condition we are going to apply at initial step instead of the pressuring step. So before applying the pressure and choose a symmetric, call it Y sync. 
and the boundary condition is going to apply only at this point. So choose Y sim for that. And then go to the mesh and in the mesh control, uh, cause the one, we don't need any mesh control, but we need to assign element type. And in element type, it automatically select the SAX1 to no linear axis symmetric shell element model. So make sure that your element is this one. Now we can assign seed for that. So because this is a 1D model, so we can make it super fine. 1E minus three, so one millimeter increment. And then we can mesh the instant. You can see that we have uh, 1200 elements, uh, around 1300 elements. And then one thing we need to make sure is the direction, normal direction for the element, cause shell element, it has two sides. Uh, one side is the positive side of shell element, the other is negative side. We want the positive side to be pointing outside the shell. So the way to do it is this assign shell memory normal. And for, for the shell element, uh, for this axisymmetric model, you cannot assign that one. But later when we have the 2D shell element, you need to do this one to make sure that the positive direction and the positive direction are the, uh, are the direction we want. And now we can create a job, cut it X, Axisymmetric model. Can submit for analysis. So The advantage for shell element, uh, sorry, for axisymmetric element is it has way less elements than the shell, actual shell element. I'll show you later how much elements do we have for shell element. And it's way easy, it will save more space for analysis and also save more time. You can check the result. The result has everything you want, but it's hard to display if you only see the if you only see uh <clears throat> one uh the cross section of that so the way we display it is in the view choosing the odb display option and sweep and choose to sweep the album and we are going to sweep entire 360 degree using 360 numbers of segments. So this same cross section is going to sweep along the axis of symmetry uh, for 360 times. Now you can see the entire shell. And then we are going to do mirror because we apply Y symmetry here. So we do XZ plane mirroring. Now you have the entire entire uh, pressure vessel. So in the option common, we hide all the mesh lines using free edge and you will see your pressure vessel. Now we simulate the shell element. <clears throat> uh, we choose file new, uh, remember to save this model and then 
uh, we create a shell, 3D shell. Uh, as we already tried it before. and create the material property. Create a section, which is a shell. And assign the section. Now we pay attention to the orientation here for shell element. <clears throat> so choose this two. And the default shell element, we can see that one is pointing this way, two is pointing that way. We have to assign the normal direction and just leave it, if, leave, leave it like that. Now in the step, create a, pressure oh sorry i forgot assembly so create this one shell element independence and then at load we create the inner pressure choose the shell we have and it's inner pressure so purple side and then the magnitude for that is 106. And boundary condition. Uh, we have more boundary condition than previously. We have a Y symmetry, a X symmetry, and another Z symmetry here. So we do the Y symmetry first. Step will be initial Y symmetry. And the Y symmetry should be applied at the bottom. So this curve only, choose Y symmetry. Create another X symmetry. To create an X symmetry, we can use this tools. First, in the view, choose the parallel so they won't have perspective view. And then for X symmetry, we are going to look at the model in the YZ plane. And everything on this, uh, sorry, uh, X, Y plane. So everything on this line will be X symmetry because it's normal to the X axis. So create X sin. Choose all the line on this two, on this axis, and then use X symmetry. Similarly, if you use Y, Z, plane and we will create a Z symmetry. Sh holding shift and choose this two and choose Z symmetry. Now that we have all the symmetry, let's look at the uh, mesh part. So first mesh control and we choose structural for mesh control and then the element type. The default should be S4R, but we don't need a reduce integration. And you will have the, so the element type, if you see that, should be S4 element, four node shear, uh, shell element. And now we check the element normal by clicking this one long click and select the second one. And in the parts, here choose the parts and choose the shell. And you see the positive side 
and negative side. Positive is in the brown and negative in, is in the purple. And well, we want to flip it. So choose that and then click down. Make the positive to pointing outside. It's, the, it's this side and negative is inside. Double check your, uh, let's save this file first. Call it a shell model. Double check your asymmetric model. Uh, In the mesh part, so the positive, uh, well, the axis is pointing inside. So, so that means uh, our previous step we do it wrong. It's, the positive side should be pointing inside. So let's reopen the shell. And here, oh, sorry, you need to choose the parts. And here, instead of positive pointing outside, we do the positive uh, pointing inside. And then in the job, we create a job called shell model. Oh, sorry, I, I forgot to mash it. So we uh, create a global seed. Remember previously we do one millimeter. So, but this is a 2D cases. So we should do it much coarser. Let's do 10 millimeter and mesh. So you can see we have 8,500. Previously we have 1,300 elements. This time, even though we make the seed 10 times coarser, but it still have way more elements than the previous case. And always remember it's a 2D, so the degrees of freedom will be more, way more than uh, eight times. So now we can submit our results. Because we have more degrees of freedom now, so the calculation take longer time and also it will the result will cost more space so let's see the result <clears throat> And to show the entire uh, shell in the viewpoint ODB display options, we need to do all the mirroring. So it will sh mirror the one eighth of the thin wall pressure vessel to the entire pressure vessel. Now we can create a new window and use this tour to display the result. The first one, we are going to show our axisymmetric model result. The second one, we are going to show our shell model result. And the fir first one, let's see the S11. So they are different. They're uh, simulated using different method, but you can see that the result is almost exactly the same. It's except that there's a minor difference in the in the number, and it's caused many caused by the mesh size. So if you can make the shell element finer, then 
this will be exactly the same as this one. And you can also, this is longitudinal stress. Also, you can see the stress in the center of the pressure vessel is around, around five here. While if you see the hoop stress, let's use this one to uh, link the both. We, oh, sorry, we cannot link that. And choose the S22 because they have different outputs. So it's also similar except that uh, the stress in the middle now is 1E9, so 10E8, so two times than the longitudinal stress. It satisfies our theoretical result for thin wall pressure vessel. In conclusion, for the axisymmetric model, it has less element and take less time, and it's way easy, it can, you can make it much finer than the shell element model. But the restriction is you have to have a symmetric geometry together with a symmetric loading, excess symmetric loading. While for shell element, it doesn't need to be symmetric geometry. It doesn't even need to be symmetric loading too. It's more general, but it will take more space and also more calculation time. And hope that this video can help you with any analysis related to axisymmetric model and help you how to display the result.